But we're going to receive the ministry of Apostle Aroma. Before, before he comes, I want you to give him a special committee welcome. And let him know that we love him. And I love you, sir. Give him a big up bless you as he comes. to stand on this exalted platform. The Lord is orchestrating a migration back to the apostolic template of things. The original burden that was upon the spirit of our ancestors is coming back again. And the wisdom that gave them the privilege to penetrate, the Lord is beginning to reinvent it. There is a mighty shift in the spirit and if we are not attentive, we are likely to become obsolete. So in a moment of time, you want to rededicate your life again and say, Lord, make me your weapon, make me your instrument. Make me your man. Make me your servant. Can you mutter those words to the Lord in the moment of time? Every single individual will have to be mobilized in order for God's dream to find expression fully on the planet. You are his foot soldier. And his grace will flow through your vessel. Lord, we give you praise this morning. We give you glory. And we ask, oh God, that you rise from within us and challenge us and bring us perspective. Make us useful to the glory of your name. In Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you indeed. All right, we we'll attempt to do Bible study for 40 minutes. Turn your Bible with me to the book of Exodus, chapter 7. Exodus 7. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Hallelujah. It says, See. Let it come to you as a revelation that I have made you a God, an authority unto Pharaoh, but Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. The idea of a prophet, according to scriptures, is a mouthpiece. A mouthpiece that brings the transmissions of an entity brings it forth in simple plain language and that's the idea of a prophet in this scripture there are two metaphors Moses and Aaron 
the Moses metaphor in this scripture speaks about the operation of our receptacle the organ from whence we receive from God receive the mind of God and Aaron is a metaphor that speaks about the technology of conveying that which has been secured on the heart of God in simple precise language that does not offer any possibility of ambiguity now my emphasis this morning is majorly on the prophetic ministry there are several shades of the prophetic ministry and not every prophet is from God in fact according to the Bible there are three kinds of prophets if you are still with me say amen, amen. there are three kinds of prophets according to the Bible and we are going to begin with lesson one the prophet we have the prophet of Baal we have the prophets of Ashtaroth then we have the prophets of God so my first intention is to disclose the workings of the prophets of Baal and one powerful example in the category of the prophets of Baal is the man Bela the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ so by definition the prophets of Baal are prophets that use divination in fact the prophetic word or the message that a vessel that uses divination releases are called soothsayings and I would like us to check a few scriptures to see um, a trend that I would like to reveal hallelujah let us do um, first Samuel so that I can introduce something quickly okay let us do Deuteronomy Deuteronomy chapter 13 from verse number 1 if there rise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give it thee a sign or a wonder and the sign or the wonder come to pass whereof he spake unto thee saying let us go after other gods which thou hast not known and let us serve them thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or dreamer of dreams for the lord your god proveth you to know whether ye love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul ye shall walk after the lord your god and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him he shall and that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he had spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God the objective the objective of this dimension of Satan's strategy is to achieve one purpose which is to turn the hearts of men from the Lord and that is achieved in a very subtle manner uh, that we need to pay attention to the purpose of putting up a display using the instrument of a spirit of divination is to turn the heart of men from the Lord to other gods to other idols 
to other things that seduce the soul of humankind. If you are still with me, say, Amen. Amen. So that is a grand objective of the operation of divination. As we go on, you will see the prophets of Asteroth. There is an objective that is achieved when Satan uses that instrument to deceive and to beguile people in the body of Christ. But we'll stay on divination for now. Amen. What exactly is divination? It is the act of obtaining secrets of illegitimate knowledge of the future by methods unsanctioned by God. If you access spiritual knowledge, maybe futuristic knowledge, maybe an insight that is needed to explain a certain circumstance or a certain situation. Someone dies and you want to find out why the person dies. That knowledge that you are accessing is illegitimate. And when people apply their soul to access such knowledge that comes through divination, what you have done is that you have sought from Satan such things that you should only seek from God. And in the process of that seeking, that alignment, you unconsciously make Satan your God. Now, the issue of the operation of the spirit of Balaam and his attempt to override the presence and the person of the Holy Spirit in the body of Christ is a critical issue, especially now. Because there is about to be a mighty move of God and Satan himself is aware of the potential of that move. So what he did is that he went beforehand to plant false prophets on the continent of Africa majorly. Because that's one of the platforms that God will use as his, the launching pad for his initiative. So there is this acquaintance. So many people have been exposed to the transmissions that have come through these instruments that have been planted by the devil. In a conference like this, we need to bring some instruments through which we can heighten our discernment so that we will not be guilty of bowing down to a God that Apostle Paul does not know. Now, if a man seeks knowledge from a spirit other than the spirit of God, what he has done is that he has enthroned the influence of that spirit over his soul. He has, he has indirectly given that spirit access and authority over his life. He has made that spirit to become his God. So even if a false prophet stands and begins to minister, you are not aware that it's false. But you believe in what he is saying, you accept his ministry. What you have done is that you have enthroned the spirit that he is a mouthpiece to. Alright? To influence your life as though that spirit were your God. Now if we study ancient Israel... And the instructions and commandments that God gave about false prophets. You will see that one of the things that can sway the people of God. Away from alignment with God. Is this strategy of the devil. To bring soothsayers that use spirits of di divination. And to masquerade as prophets. Right now there is an infiltration of this movement. This kind of initiative that was bettered by the kingdom of darkness. There is a massive in infiltration in Nigeria here. And uh, it is even more likely in other nations of Africa. As much as we need to take 
the gospel to places that the gospel has not arrived. We are going to have a shortfall in missionary manpower if the people that are in the body of Christ are swayed by the spirit of divination. Their heart will be turned to follow false gods and they will no longer have the capacity to carry the original pure burden of the law. Satan has a plan to orchestrate a shortfall in missionary manpower. But I pray that God will do a quick walk in our midst in the name of Jesus. Amen. Divination is that arm of the kingdom of darkness that holds in store demonic spiritual knowledge. Witchcraft. So divination equals knowledge. It is it is an avenue through which spiritual knowledge from the dark realm can be acquired. So divination equals what? Knowledge. It's an access to spiritual knowledge. It holds the treasure of spiritual knowledge. And so if people need spiritual knowledge through a spirit of error, it will be achieved by divination. One of the reasons why you find human beings... Seeking the devil is because they have a need for knowledge. So one of the products that Satan advertises in getting the attention of human beings is to show them the hope of accessing strategic knowledge that is available in the kingdom of darkness. The agency of the kingdom of darkness that is responsible for veiling that dimension, that product, that is in the kingdom of darkness is called divination. Whereas divination deals with spiritual knowledge, witchcraft deals with spiritual power. You see, the power is the ability to perform, to do work. And the power of darkness, which is the ability of darkness to perform, to cause changes, is held up in the satanic department called witchcraft. Are you, are you still with me? <laughs> you are not with me. Now this is what Jesus said. I want to take it gradually so that we will follow the progression seamlessly. This is what Jesus said. He said, behold, I believe that's Luke chapter 10 verse 19. If you have Luke 10, 19, you can display it on the screen. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. This is Jesus. He said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents. Now, that's a metaphor. That doesn't necessarily mean physical serpent. Even if you tread on a physical serpent, it will not translate to profit in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> so I'm just trying to reveal to us that it is a metaphor that Jesus used. And I need to unveil to us the meaning of this metaphor. Because as we press, you will find out that serpents in this scripture is referring to divination. Divination. How many of you believe that the New Testament was originally written in Greek language? I know we are theologians here, so you can confirm that. If you go to the book of Acts chapter 16, where the word divination is mentioned, and you trace it using the pilot number in your lexicon to find out the original Greek word that was used to translate divination in English language, somebody try it. You will find Python. And that is the Greek word that was translated Python. Are you there with me? So when we talk about serpents, we are actually referring to people that use the strategic knowledge that have come through divination. Oh my God, you are not here. Jesus is saying that as you go around Enugu city, 
As you go around the villages, you will collide with people that have links with divination. He said, without fail, this is what you will collide with. It is because of this collision that you cannot avoid that you need power to prosecute natural life. In the eyes of Jesus, in the eyes of Jesus, in order for you to prosecute natural life, you need power. Not for crusade, not for evangelism. To live, to live your life. Oh my God. You need power to be able to prosecute natural life because as you are going around Enugu, you will find people that have been energized by the knowledge that came through divination. If you want to walk in any parastatal of government, you will meet with people that have been advised by diviners. And this is what Jesus is saying. In order for you to prosecute natural life, you need an installment of spiritual capital. May the Lord give you understanding. So when we talk divination, don't think it is something we need to go to the library to understand. It is something that is rooted in your city, in my city. And for this, God equips us with the spiritual capital of power to prosecute natural life and to accomplish the mission that he's sending us to accomplish. If we go to the book of Luke chapter 10 from verse 1, you will see it's a missionary scripture. Jesus is equipping functionaries that will take the gospel to different towns and villages. Are you there? You're not there. So I just want to reveal the context so that you understand that the context here is missionary in, in, in nature, in shape. He said, after these things, the Lord appointed 70 also. The word I wanted to extract from this verse of scripture is the use of the word also. The use of the word also is a common ground of comparison. It means what Jesus is doing now, he did it before. Are you there? I'm just trying to establish that the theme of Luke chapter 10 is missionary. Jesus is dispatching functionaries to go into towns and villages just like doctor said that we need to go back to the um, eastern region of Nigeria. People need to be sent. This is a script of, for the sent ones. Now because of the use of the word also, it means that we need to check for the previous time that Jesus sent his functionaries to do this kind of kingdom business. And you will find that account in the book of Luke chapter 9 verse 1. So if we go to Luke chapter 9 verse 1, you will see the whole equipping process that Jesus put together to furnish adequately these functionaries that will be dispatched to extend the influence and to extend the frontiers of the kingdom of God. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them what? Power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. So this is the context. This is the same kind of thing that happened in the book of Luke chapter 10. This time, it was 12 functionaries that were being dispatched. Subsequently, in chapter 10, it was 70 functionaries that were being dispatched. But the dispatch protocol was still consistent. It was like it was in the previous time. And that's why the word also was used. Is that clear? Now, when these guys came back from the mission field, they came back with testimonies. And after they came back with testimonies, Jesus made a statement which I don't want to unveil now. It was after he made that statement that he now gave them an assurance that ye shall receive what? So that you can tread on divination. The scorpion there is witchcraft. How many of you have been stung by scorpion before? Did you trace, did you find the scorpion that was responsible for this thing? Very small. And the part of the scorpion that put 
electric shocks through your body you notice it's very small but it is full of energy power that is an illustration of how witchcraft is it's the organ of the kingdom of darkness that holds satanic power and it can inflict injury it can inflict it can inflict all kinds of of of, of damage and jesus is saying that in order for you to have capacity to threat to do rubbish make rubbish of witchcraft make rubbish of divination what do you need there so in the eyes of jesus we are going to come into conflict with people that have been powered by divination and it is part of the realities around our mission mandate are you there I went to minister in London once and the church had a small accommodation so they went to a neighboring school that was close to the church facility and asked them permission for me to use their library for counseling so when I was admitted into the library before the first person that I was to counsel came in I took time to take inventory of the books in the library when I scrolled down all the books on my left hand had something to do with witchcraft and my interest was aroused and I now looked with more in intentionality and I found physical objects in the library which I've only known through reading physical witchcraft objects that I've never seen in my life I saw them in that library that is not a secondary school library it's a primary school library When we were much younger, we read books and then they spoke about people that fly with brooms. Brooms. Are you there? I saw the broom, that broom. It was physically there. Because in their own system, the way they teach is that they must bring the thing to show you so that you are not guessing how it looks like. So that you can form a picture, a mental picture of the things in which you have been instructed. So the library was equipped with physical witchcraft items that i only knew in books are you still with me now so so um okay let me stop there i will not i will not proceed <laughs> i will not proceed when i looked and observed critically and i was enlightened by the holy ghost i discovered that that library i was can be adequately and accurately defined as a shrine all the items all the items needed to begin divination begin a, a shrine they were present in the school library and people were releasing their children to go study in those places now jesus said don't think that divination is a scholastic matter you will meet it. it's a so it's, it's a societal matter are you with me so there are many ways many modern ways in which divination has been inculcated into society my wife runs a school so we check the books that um, are supplied to us we see the content of what is in the books that are supplied to us to use to educate and many times we have seized many of these books because of the spirituality the demonic spirituality that is i mean nigerian books not even oh you are not with me you are pretending that we are not in nigeria so i will pretend along with you for a moment we had to withdraw books and destroy those books Jesus said we'll meet with divination. So there are many options of how divination is practiced in a very civilized way. 
One of them is horoscopy. Sorry about the big English. Uh, now in horoscopy, some master masters who are experts in studying the configuration of planetary bodies and the alignment of the sun, moon, and star. I've said that human beings fall into 12 categories consistent with the 12 months of the calendar year. And uh, their postulated theories that were according to the 12 signs of the zodiac. And in that framework, every human being on the face of the earth has an animalistic projection. That understanding your animalistic projection will give you an insight into the fortunes that can befall you, especially in several time windows. And in developed nations, the fortunes that are told by these signs of the zodiac are very critical matters. In fact, hallelujah. In fact, there are interpreters of this zodiac that are in communities right now. I know of nations in Europe where people go for consultation, including Christians. So horoscopy is one of the means through which divination is sold and practiced. Another method is what we call the Ouija board. It's like a game. A game that you play with a spirit. And that spirit, according to them, is an all-knowing spirit. And the spirit can help you find out knowledge that is supernatural. You will do a brief incantation and invite the spirit. And you will light a candle. When the spirit comes, the candle will do like this. Even though there is no possibility for breeze to come into that place where you are practicing. That's a sign to show you that you have company. And as you begin to play, this Uji board is in the libraries of our universities. Oh my God. I'm not talking about something you need to browse to find. It is part of the items in our university libraries. And it is a means through which you can have participation with the ideas of a spirit of error. Hallelujah. I know you know palm reading and all the rest. These are means through which divination functions. A certain preacher preached so powerfully and invited people for counseling. And the moment you come, you will look at your palm and say, okay, uh, are you a twin? Uh, what is on your hand is saying you are a twin. Oh. So the counseling was actually palm reading. Meanwhile, he preached powerfully on the pulpit. But you see, the, the, the instrument or the personality that gives him access to the realm of the spirit is a spirit of error. Satan is aware that the soul of the fallen man has a lust for spiritual knowledge. And so he brings options and uses it to seduce people in order to arrest them and turn their hearts away from God. The other day, some brethren went into the bush to pray all night. And by the time they were coming back from the bush, one is a mo had his branch close to the bush. They saw an elder of their church coming out of the tent of the Ezemo. So they, 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 they ran and caught up with the elder. Say, what are you doing here? The elder said, my children, God, God, to the day, God, the day. <laughs> God, the day. 
So he went to. So the devil has a product he's advertising. Quick answers. Quick results. Quick breakthrough. Quick prosperity. Without process. Because God they take. Turn your Bible with me to the book of Acts chapter 16 quickly. In Acts chapter 16, beginning from verse 16. Verse 16, please. And it came to pass as we went to prayer. A certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us. Which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried saying, These men are the servants of the most high God. We show unto us the way of salvation and this did she many days but Paul being grieved turned and said to the spirit I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her and he came out of her same hour next verse and when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers. Let me stop there. Hallelujah. So I want to do an analysis quickly to show you the differences between a true prophet and a soothsayer. In order to accomplish this analysis, I want to enjoin you to draw a table. You put prophecy on one side. You put soothsaying on the other side. Are you there? So draw the table. So the first column is prophecy. Prophecy is what is obtainable when we function at mouthpieces of the Holy Spirit. Soothsayings. And what is obtainable when one functions as a mouthpiece to a spirit of divination. And when we finish doing this contrast and comparison, you will find out that if Satan wants to send a false messenger into the body of Christ, the major identity that that messenger is likely to carry is the identity of a prophet. And I'm going to show you why. Before I do this analysis, I may take you to... Okay. Well, let me see. I may take you to a scripture just to establish a few facts um, before... Uh, we begin the analysis now just jump with me to first john chapter 4 verse 1 first first john chapter 4 verse 1 you know we said that a prophet by definition is a mouthpiece a spokesperson so someone can be a prophet of god because he's a spokesperson to god someone can be a prophet of baal because he can pick the frequencies of Baal and he speaks for Baal. Someone can be a prophet of Asterot because he picks the frequencies of Asterot and he speaks for Asterot. In the book of 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, the Bible says, Beloved, believe not every spirit and try the spirits whether they are of God. Why? Why is he bringing this counsel? What did he say we should try? 
Why did he, he say try every spirit? Because four spirits have gone into the world. Is it not spirit? He said we should try. And the reason for which he said we should try every spirit is because what? So if, if four spirits want to manifest, they manifest as prophets. Are you there? Oh, you are not with me. Please help me preach to your neighbor. If four spirits want to manifest, they manifest as what? False prophet. Because the idea of the prophetic is mouthpiece. So when that false spirit begins to hover, looking for an agent that will find compatibility with him, he finds someone that is willing to become a mouthpiece. That's how a prophetic ministry begins. Once upon a, a time in my experience in ministry, there was this woman. The woman became so sick. Her health condition defied medical help and assistance. Then her people came from the village and pressured her husband that they have to take her to the village. So when they took her to the village and they administered village cure she got well and she came back as a prophet she began to see things you need to see the number of people she gathers on thursdays on saturdays on sundays this was a person that people were coming to pray for because of the sickness that defied medical treatment. This person we are talking about, are you there? Her husband is the pastor. She was not a, a faithful believer. She didn't believe in the calling of the husband. But she just fell sick. And when they took her to the village, she was revived and came back with a calling. The, the, her, her prominence was so much that the husband who had the calling sat down and, and said, okay, she's the oil to power the ministry is on his wife now. So he's, he's, he, he's a student now learning the oil, learning it. The practitioners of divination are no longer in the forest and in the hinterland. They wear suit now, very powerful suit, and they have better microphones than most of us. The effort that I'm making this morning is to provide basic discernment on how to know if someone is operating by the spirit of divination. The woman became a mighty rendezvous point. Oh my God. She steps in like that after praise and worship. And she begins to pick people. Tell them about their... First of all, in order for her to make you believe she's saying the truth, she would make, mention some things that she can never know except by revelation. And then she disarms you quickly. Tells you about your village. Let's see how many siblings you have. Say one has died. Mention the name of two of them. The name of your mother. Oh! Everybody on Saturday, people, in fact, you need to see the crowd. Huge crowd. In fact, one of the days she came and anointed one of her daughters that when she dies, you are the one that is going to carry over in this work and all of that it is that daughter that i met because the woman died suddenly and then that daughter now was anointed ordained to come and carry the ministry <laughs> ah. then death began to hit the family then that daughter came to see me that was how i got to know the story 
The lady that was anointed to take over the ministry doesn't have a calling. Well, we will go back. We will we'll come back to that story. If you are still with me, say amen. Yeah. Meanwhile, I realized I was not timed. Because I'm beginning to enjoy this thing now. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, I'll round up. I'll round up now. I'll round up now. So, number one, under prophecy. Prophecy is a transmission of the heart of the spirit of truth. It is a revelation of what is on the heart of Jesus and the instrumentality by which these transmissions come is the spirit of truth are you there? now, you are not following me the spirit of truth is the vehicle through which prophecy is given prophecy is a disclosure of what is on the heart of Jesus. Prophecy is a disclosure on what is on the mind of God. You see, the difference between a true prophet and a diviner is that the diviner can reveal things. He can reveal your name, the color of your singlet, the name of your father and your village. But a diviner cannot reveal what is on the mind of God. We have received a spirit which is not of this world, but a spirit which is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us of God. The things of God can only be decoded by the spirit of God. So you can hear people giving names and saying things, but they can never reveal what is on the mind of God. The fact that you have a microphone doesn't mean that you are bearing witness to the heart of Christ. When you confront, when you confront that so-called prophet and say, no, this thing you are doing is not biblical, the person cannot use the Bible to defend himself. The person will insult you and your grandfather. The reason is because he has no content. He was not raised to understand the authority that is in the word of God. But he knows how to call your name. So it is a spirit of truth that is responsible for prophecy. It connects us to the heart of Jesus. And through the spirit of truth, we can understand what is on the heart of Jesus. The emphasis and the present revelation position of the spirit. But, the spirit of divination can unveil what is true. True. Because your name is Francis, it's true. Her name is Janet, it's true. Your father's name is Samson. True. Ah, you are not following me. My, my time is up. I can't juggle with that scripture. First John chapter 5. A question was asked in First John chapter 5. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believes that Jesus is the son of God. Then the second question is, how can we know the real Jesus? He said, this is he that came by water. Ah, okay, let's go. First John chapter 5, verse 5. He said, who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? So the next question is, how can we know the real Jesus? The Bible says he came by water and by blood. Now by water was John the Baptist's baptismal service. When he was praying and he came out of the water, the Bible says that the heavens... The Holy Spirit descended from heaven in bodily shape like a dove and God the Father bore witness about Jesus. So there were, 
There are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. Two of those witnesses bore witness about Jesus. When he came out of the water. Because baptism, the ordinance of baptism that was given to John the Baptist. Was a strategy by which the Messiah could be revealed. So he did not come only by water, he came also by blood. Those people that were around the cross when Jesus was crucified. You know there was a centurion there. And that guy has crucified many people and killed people. But the crucifixion of Jesus was different for him. And when he saw the omens that manifested around the torture and the eventual death of Jesus. The centurion who is an unbeliever. He said indeed this one is a righteous man. I don't want to go into details. Of all the things that happened. The omens that spoke. And people that have spiritual understanding were able to decode what it was. The, the eclipse that took place, the, the tremor that took place, and all those things that spoke around the death of Jesus. So he came also by blood. So, But if you were not there when Jesus was baptized, and you were not there when, when Jesus' blood hit the earth, how can you know the real Jesus? He said, he said, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is what? Now, see, previously, John said, call the Holy Ghost the spirit of truth. But in this place, he had gained additional re revelation and he said the spirit actually is truth. So the ministry of truth is the ability of the Holy Spirit to bear witness about things that we cannot verify intellectually and with our senses. So even though that woman with, with divination was saying things that were true, when the truth which who was in, in Paul arose, the ministry of truth arose and he began to bear witness. Are you there? The witness that the Holy Spirit bore troubled the spirit of Paul to know that even though those things are true, it did not come out of the belly of the spirit of truth. So there is a difference between true and truth. So one walking with the spirit of divination will, will say things that are true. But he can never reveal what is on the heart of God. One walking with the spirit of God can bear witness of that which is truth. Please help me tell your neighbor, don't confuse true for truth. Under the prophecy side, a prophet is in the service of God. But the objective of one that has a spirit of divination is gain. Gain. So when the people are mesmerized by the supernatural dimension, the objective is to use that surrender to extort. It was a business that was done. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. It was what? Business. It was business. I don't want to press further. I don't want to press further. But you know where I'm going. You know what I want to press. You know it. Mm. It's a business. So a prophet is in actual service of God. Administering the mind of God. In simple plain language. As Jesus would have done. If he were physically present. But a diviner. Is trying to mesmerize people. To disarm people. To believe that he is the great power of God. So that he can have authority to extort. Because his objective is what? Gain. Number three. The security of a prophet. You see, it's a very difficult thing to be a prophet. When you speak the mind of God, people that are benefiting from corruption will come against you so every true prophet has a security and the security of a prophet is the holy ghost hallelujah but the security of one that uses 
a spirit of divination because he knows that he will be uncovered any day God decides to raise a true voice. He knows that his practices of darkness will be uncovered. So he builds infrastructure of security around himself. And the security of one that uses divination is a cartel, a mafia. So people that are trafficking in divination have a very articulated mafia built around themselves to protect that darkness. But you know what? God has started. He has started judging everything that is not of him that has survived around the corridors of the body of Christ. And this judgment will continue for about three years from now. It will continue. There's a demolition that God is beginning to orchestrate in his house to cut off everything that uses his name to adorn the kingdom of darkness. Finally, a true prophet can operate conveniently in hiding because the major assignment of prophetic people is that they are intercessors and most intercessory initiatives can be in, in, are more effective if they are hidden are you there so a prophet can operate in hiding conveniently especially if he has found security in christ but someone using a spirit of divination must operate around spiritual authority and that's why that lady prophesied to Paul, hoping to secure the blessing of spiritual authority in order for her to infiltrate the system unchallenged. Unchallenged. So spiritual authority is a target for this display. So that with the blessing of spiritual authority, that level of deception can thrive. Are you there? I have not finished my delivery, but I was given 15 more minutes. Okay, I have seven more minutes left. This phenomena wants to operate around spiritual authority. And that's why the greatest the service any genuine man of God can do to the body of Christ is to bring an endorsement an endorsement to a person that is operating by a spirit of divination what you have done is that you have given the person access to the body of Christ and the person now has a shelf life of oppression May the Lord have mercy on us never to endorse any individual that operates by the spirit of divination in the name of Jesus Christ. These people will target fathers. These people will target people that are in authority. These people will target people that God has set in the body of Christ as pillars over generations pillars over nations global and, pillars uh, and they can bring fat offerings okay they are okay you know the bible says that the gift of a man make it room for him so the the doctrine of offering of seed hallelujah God is beginning to sieve out the body of Christ because a mighty move is coming. An unprecedented release of the grace of God is coming. Witchcraft will become a plaything. Darkness and all of his wiles will become a plaything because God is ready to move. One of the reasons why revival has started, even though we are seeing it little by little, but it has started to unfold itself in the kind of magnitude that heaven intends, is because 
there is so much infiltration in the body of Christ now and if God brings any investment into the body of Christ Satan will have a harvest from what God does fat offerings fat seeds and the eyes of men of God have been blinded endorsement have been given from people that are reckoned to be mighty pillars in the body of Christ because the spirit of divination must find a way around spiritual authority so that it can gain credence I'm going to stop here there are five tests that you can use to test every preacher the five way test go on go on go on study it we will uh, go ahead and give them oh, oh. <laughs> are you with me I have met with people, I mean met with people, physically, not through Zoom, not through social media. I have met with live human beings that came to confess to me how they were used as sex objects. Because you see, the foundation of the strength, the way to renew your allegiance to the spirit of divination is through sex i've met victims that were exploited sexually not through social media there were sex objects that were used to furnish the powers of strange altars i've met them i've conducted deliverance for a few of them some of them after these sex escapades these ladies will begin to bleed and the bleeding has no solution except a meet with a genuine man of God that can break that power are you still with me there is a war going on in the body of Christ Satan is trying to claim ground claim territory darkness is infiltrating with vigor with power and the cartel is widespread but you know what? Who can fight with God? Who can fight with Jehovah? God gave his son to die because of his church. He will fight. He will fight to protect her. We say this openly and boldly because we know the time has come. For God to begin to reclaim his body. So that he can fill the gap of missionary manpower. First test is what we call Bible test. Someone operating with a false spirit is likely to introduce extra biblical practices. Practices that cannot be supported by the Bible. Practices that we cannot trace in, in the life of our, the apostles of old in the life of Jesus. Meanwhile, the Holy Spirit cannot operate outside of the Logos. So if anything you are doing, you should be able to back it with the Bible. As a proof that it is authentic. And we must have evidence in the life of the apostles. That this was the practice that... Jesus taught them to practice. If we can find it in the life of the apostles, because Acts chapter 1 was an apostolic training school for instruments that will be used in the responsibility of extending the frontiers of the kingdom of God. If we don't find those traits in the life of the apostles that Jesus left behind, that practice you are doing, somebody brings charcoal and palm oil. And say an angel appeared to him in the night. So you use the charcoal to rub your chest and draw cross on your chest. Now, if we cannot trace what you are asking people to do 
as an established practice in the scriptures that the apostles upheld it means you are trying to orchestrate an introduction into the custom our culture are you there so we need to test everything with the bible the moment you throw the bible at the person you will discover that there is no content there is no backup for that which the people do most of the time they will insult you they will leave the bible and then make you an enemy and talk about you but it was the bible you were discussing in those days there were debates biblical debates the bible said that paul disputed he disputed with the bible so if you believe what you are doing is correct you bring the bible and it, see the bible is our authority and say okay based on this scripture my authority is traced from here from here see jesus did it the apostles are doing it it's it's, it's predominant in the body of christ it's a culture that was handed over to us and that's why we are doing it if there is if if what you bring as a defense exceeds my my light i will apologize to you that's all. it means me myself i was in darkness so when you brought light i saw it i've entered into your life because you cannot do anything against the truth there's no bible content backing extra scriptural practices that have been brought to the body of God. that's one number two i will mention number two from matthew chapter 7 verse 15. matthew chapter 7 verse 15. he said beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ravening wolves go on you shall know them by their so we have what is called the fruit test fruit hallelujah do you realize that fruit there is in plural i would like you to take note of that you will know them by what fruits you know when you give your life to christ we're not there so we are not aware that you gave your life to christ we are not aware but everything that happens in your heart when it begins to grow you will have fruit outside so you might lie about your salvation you cannot lie about the fruit that is coming out you say okay i was baptized in the holy ghost there are external fruits that show there's an initial evidence of what we are not aware that you receive the holy ghost there's an initial evidence of speaking in tongues are you there for everything god works on your inside there is a commensurate manifestation on the outside you shall know them by what so when people start saying that your work with god is of is in your heart it's a heart thing only god knows the people that are following him so you can follow jesus and nobody knows that is a case that is being made in order to support fruitless strange fruits so there's a fruit test what is it producing and one of the fruits can also be seen in the disciples that are raised because the disciples that are raised are raised from the substance of the spiritual material that is dispensed The Bible reveals that the believers were first called Christians in Antioch. The, the unbelievers gave us the name Christians, Christ-like, because of fruit. Because of evidence that came from the lives of people. Then all the people you are dis discipling 
are not Christ-like. It's like a gang. Like a mafia. How did we come to this point as a generation? There's fruit test. Then we also have clarity test. The things you are saying. Huh? You know what happened? Some people, the things they said many years ago, they have gone to pull it down from Facebook. Are, are you with me? Because contradictions have found expression. So they went to pull it down from Facebook. They don't know that we downloaded it that first time that they put it up. We have a private copy. If we check your life and what you said five years ago, you need to edit it because of current circumstances. That are proven that you are a liar. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. It means. What power do you was a lie. That thing was a lying spirit. So if there is ambiguity. In that which you are saying now, with that which you said before, if there is no consistency, it means at some point there was a veering off. Then we have a spirit based test. Because God has sealed every one of us with the seal of His Spirit. So as you are doing what you are doing, people have their own private thermometer. There's a private barometer by which we can measure the pressure and the temperature of what is going on. The Holy Ghost is still there to bear witness. And then finally we have the character test. Character. God doesn't only speak through a prophet. God also reveals himself to a prophet. In fact, he reveals himself to a prophet first. Before he uses the prophet as his mouthpiece. The reason why God will reveal himself is because he wants you to understand his nature. He wants you to understand how you operate. He wants you to understand how he functions. Are you there? Because it is possible for you to have the gift of word of knowledge. And you can tell how much Naira this sister has in her purse. Because of the gift. And then you walk to the sister, tell her how much money she's carrying. And then after telling her she's mesmerized, you now say, you have to drop it as a seed. But the Lord did not say that. So what happened is that you used God's gift to steal. Your manifestation of the gift was in stealing. And God happens not to be a thief. It means that you have, in your administration of the gift, you have not, you have misrepresented God. Are you there? That's why a liar cannot be a prophet. A liar. If we see that a lying spirit is operating in your life, we can't believe you are a prophet because of a character test. God is not just concerned about using people. The vessel he uses is supposed to be worthy of him. Because in speaking for God, you are representing God. And every aspect of your life is it's an, it's an exhibit of that representation. So God wants to reveal himself to you so that he can speak through you. God bless you.
everybody say thank you sir please uh, Pastor Beck you are taking an offering but I want that you want back to do something can you get me one mic I, I want every form of a lot of ministers are here and this people are praying on this nation on South East on Africa every form of lying devil let's bind it daddy and maybe people will have to repent I don't want to make it like altar call. I don't care where you are, high, where you are standing, and those that are watching by television and all of that. There, there is need to purge out this evil plague that has come upon the body of Christ. And Nigeria must lead the way in purging this stuff out. Because, like you heard, the truth is that in the next three years, and I'm not talking about future, it's not more a future prophecy. Starting now, many of you are going to die. Many of you are going to, some of you will run mad. Some of you will, will be exposed. Some of you will find yourself in strange situations. Many of you are going to die. If you don't repent, if you don't repent, Balaam's ministry will not continue forever.